Okay, so let's go there because I got to talk to you about this. So obviously with the case of Boston Dynamics, as you may or may not know, it's always uh, either hard-coded or remote-controlled. There's no intelligence. So, uh, I don't know how, how the current generation of Boston Dynamics robots works, but uh, what I've been told about the previous ones was that uh, it's basically all cybernetic control, which means you still have uh, feedback mechanisms and so on, but it's not uh, deep learning for the most part as it's currently done. Mm -hmm. It's um, for the most part just identifying a control hierarchy that is uh, congruent to uh, the limbs that exist and the parameters that need to be optimized for the movement of these limbs. And then there is a convergence progress. So it's basically just regression that you would need to control this. But again, I don't know whether that's true. That's just what I've been told about how they work. We have to separate several levels of discussion here. So the only thing they do is pretty sophisticated control no, with no machine learning mm -hmm. in order to be uh, to maintain balance or to write itself. It's a control problem in terms of using the actuators to when it's pushed or when it steps on a thing that's uneven, how to always maintain balance. Yes. And there's a tricky like set of heuristics around that, but uh, that's the only goal. Everything you see Boston Dynamics doing in terms of that to us humans is compelling, which is any kind of um, higher order movement, like turning, uh, wiggling its butt, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, j jumping back on its two feet, dancing. Dancing is even worse because dancing is hard coded in. It's um, it's choreographed by humans. There's choreography software. So like there is no, of all that high level movement, there's no anything that you can call, certainly can't call AI. But there's no uh, even like basic heuristics. It's all hard coded in and yet, we humans immediately project agency onto them, which is which is fascinating. So the, the gap here is uh, it doesn't necessarily have agency. What it has is cybernetic control. And the cybernetic control means you have a hierarchy of feedback loops that keep the behavior in certain boundaries so the robot doesn't fall over and it's able to perform the movements. And the choreography cannot really happen with motion capture because the robot would fall over because the physics of the robot, the weight distribution and so on, is different from the weight distribution in the human body. So if you were uh, using the directly motion captured movements of a human body to project it into this robot, it mm -hmm. wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. You can do this with a computer animation, it will look a little bit off, but who cares? But it, uh, if you want to correct for the physics, you need to basically tell the robot where it should move its limbs, mm -hmm. and then uh, the control algorithm is going to approximate a solution that makes it possible within the physics of the robot. Mm -hmm. And you have to find um, the basic solution for making that happen. And there's probably going to be some regression necessary to uh, get the control architecture to, to make these movements. But those two layers are separate. So yes. the, the, the thing, the higher level instruction of what, how you should move and where you should move is yeah, a so I level. expect that the control uh, level of these robots at some level is dumb. This is just the, yeah. the physical control movement, the motor architecture. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a relatively smart motor architecture. It's just that there is no high-level deliberation about what decisions to make necessarily. Yeah. Right. But see, so, it doesn't feel like um, free will or no, consciousness. No, no, that was not where I was trying to get to. I think that in our own uh, body, we have that too. So we have a certain thing that is basically just a cybernetic control architecture that is moving our limbs. Mm -hmm. And um, deep learning can help in discovering such an architecture if you don't have it in the first place. If you already know your hardware, you can maybe handcraft it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know your hardware, you can search for such an architecture. And this work already existed in the uh, 80s and 90s. People were starting to search for control architectures by motor babbling and so on, and just mm -hmm. use uh, reinforcement learning architectures to discover such a thing. And uh, now imagine that you have the cybernetic control architecture already inside of you. And you extend this a little bit. So you are seeking out food, for instance, or rest, or and so on. And uh, you get to have a baby at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you uh, add more and more control layers to this. And the system is reverse engineering its own control architecture and builds a high-level model to synchronize the pursuit of very different conflicting goals. Mm -hmm. And this is how I think you get to purposes. Purposes are models of your goals. The goals might be intrinsic as the result of the different set point violations that you have, hunger and thirst for very different things, mm -hmm. and uh, rest and pain avoidance and so on. And you put all these things together and eventually 
you need to come up with a strategy to synchronize them all. And you don't need uh, just to do this alone by yourself because we are state building uh, organisms. We cannot function in isolation the way that Homo sapiens is set up. So our own behavior only makes sense when you zoom out very far into a society or even into ecosystemic intelligence on the planet and our place in it. So the individual behavior only makes sense in these larger contexts. And we have a number of priors built into us. So we are behaving as if we were acting on these high-level goals pretty much right from the start. Mm -hmm. And eventually in the course of our life, we can reverse engineer the goals that we are acting on, what actually are our higher-level purposes. Mm -hmm. And the more we understand that, the more our behavior makes sense. But this is all, at this point, complex stories within stories that are driving our behavior. Yeah, I just don't know how big of a leap it is to start uh, create a system that's able to tell stories within stories like how big of a leap that is from where currently Boston Dynamics is or any robot that's operating in the physical space. Uh, that And that leap might be big if it requires to solve the hard problem of consciousness, which is telling a hell of a good story. I suspect that um, consciousness itself is relatively simple. What's hard is perception and the interface between perception and reasoning. There's, for instance, the idea of um, the consciousness prior that would be built into such a system by uh, Joshua Bengio. And uh, what he describes, and I think that's accurate, is that our own um, um, model of the world can be described through something like an energy function. The energy function is modeling the contradictions that exist within the model at any given point. And you try to minimize these contradictions, the tangents in the model. And to do this, you need to sometimes test things. You need to conditionally disambiguate figure and ground. You need to dis, uh, distinguish whether this is true or that is true and so on. Eventually, you get to an interpretation, but you will need to manually depress a few points in your model to let it snap into a state that makes sense. And this function that tries to get the biggest dip in the energy function in your model, mm -hmm. according to Joshua Bengio, is related to consciousness. It's a low-dimensional discrete function that tries to uh, maximize this dip in the energy function. I yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I think I would need to dig into details because I think the way he uses the word consciousness is more akin to like self awareness, like modeling yourself within the, the world, as opposed to the subjective experience, the hard problem. No, it's not even the self within the world. The self is the agent, and you don't need to be aware of yourself in order to be conscious. The self is just a particular content that you can have, but you don't have to have. Right. You can be conscious in, uh, for instance, a dream at night or during a meditation state where you don't have a self. Right. Where you're just aware of the fact that you are aware. And what we mean by consciousness in uh, the colloquial sense is uh, largely this reflexive self-awareness. That we become aware of the fact that we are paying attention. And that we are the thing that pays attention. We are the thing that pays attention, right. 